Okay guys, so I'm here with John Picasso. I've been staring at his artwork across the way all day. Uh, he has these awesome Loteria cards that he's been working on that just look amazing. Uh, especially for here in San Antonio, if you're used to playing Mexican bingo, they are so cool, you need to pick some of these up. So John, how has the Alamo City Comic Con been treating you so far? It's been amazing. I mean, I've been with this show now like, what, four years? This is the fourth year of this show. And I've watched it go from what, like 37,000 to like 73 to 78. And I don't even know what the attendance is this year, but it's been it's been off the hook. Yeah, it's got to be huge. Today today was a busy day, so I'm sure that's been pretty great for you people checking out your art. And everything. Yeah, and and the and I would say because of what we did with Worlds Beyond Gallery, which is like me plus Todd Lockwood, Jeffrey Allen Love, Peter Morbacher, Brom, and Ruth Sanderson. I mean, this is a first time thing, and it's it's doing a model for. Um, bringing in sort of high-level illustration and sort of a museum gallery level environment and dropping it into a major media convention. It's never been done. It's kind of an unprecedented thing. And this model could not have been done without Apple de la Fuente, without Wes Hartman, without Austin Rogers, the guys that sort of stir the milk, the straws that stir the milk <laughs> for Alamo City Comic Con. And it's been incredible. I mean, I, we're, st we're still in the middle of the game in a sense. We still got another day, and it's been incredible the response. Yeah, there's still more time on the clock, and definitely, I, I definitely got that feel, that art gallery feel when I walked in. Because the first day I came in here and I was walking around on preview night, it was the one thing that stood out to me. I was like, "What is this area? This is this is not like everything else." It feels like a spaceship just dropped in, just dropped into the middle of the place. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, what is your what is your favorite piece that you've done, ever created, worked on? Do you have it with you by chance? I mean, I don't know. There's a lot. I mean, it's like picking your babies. But I will say right now, Calavera, and maybe it's because it's the time of the year. We're we're getting towards Day of the Dead, but uh, La Calavera is probably one of my favorite things I've done in the last five years. It's very popular. Uh, with my audience and and you know I, I think because I'm a San Antonio guy it, it connects with our community because this is a lot about our culture and uh, yeah this is one of my faves yeah definitely love our San Antonio native artists love the support that we're showing love that you've been here all four years um, so you know what inspires you what what got you started into art what got me started I mean it's like one of those things I, I think I was drawing before I could read so I mean <laughs> it just comes it's just it's part of the genetics, I guess. You know, it's just what I do, and I, I've never stopped doing it. Um, but I will say, as, what, as far as what inspires me, I mean, you're kind of looking at it in a way. That's yeah. part of what Worlds Beyond was about. It's a lot of what I tell kids is that, you know, it's great to copy the things that you love and, and try to express that love in drawing. But I tell kids, as early as you can, start coming using your own imagination to come up with your own visions. I mean, Spider-Man, Batman... The Walking Dead, X-Men, they all came from somebody's yeah. brain. We all take them for granted. We almost feel like they're part of our family. <laughs> but I say, I tell people all the time, start making your own stuff. And that's a lot of what was important about Worlds Beyond is, yes, I've worked on Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, project, uh, Property. I've worked on X-Men, Star Trek. And that helped me build my career. But now I'm using that credibility to create my own entities. And even though I didn't create Loteria, I mean, that's part of the culture. Yeah. Anybody out there could do their own Loteria. I'm just doing it in a way that nobody's ever it seen, been, ever. It's your own spin, and that's and, it's and unique all, to you. Everybody in Worlds Beyond is doing their own thing, yeah. and it has their own voice, and their own creator own property. And so I look at these guys, and they're my inspiration. That's why I pulled them here, you know? I wanted everybody else to share in that. Yeah. Well, I, th I think the Worlds Beyond Center, this entire little area, it, it is a beautifully terrific and wonderful idea. I absolutely love it. I love all the art that's going on, because that, that's one of my favorite things, and I think it sometimes might get lost in the con. You know, I know there's just celebrities, but we have so much art, so many talented artists. Um, so for those young artists that are out there, what is your advice to them? You know, what, do you, what, do you, what would you tell them to motivate them to keep going with what they're doing? The early you can start crystallizing and expressing your own imaginative visions and start weaning yourself off of drawing other people's visions, the better. The more, you, the earlier you can start telling your own stories, the better. And start building your voice and relying on your voice. The earlier you can do that, the better. And it's a process. I mean, I, I don't think you can just jump off and just say, well, you know, nothing's created out of a vacuum, first of all. But also, I, I think a lot of times you've got to sort of um, look at other people's stuff and almost copy it before you can start to find your own voice. But the earlier you can do that, the better.